Lord, I say, Lord.
Good morning, Holman Street, and to everyone that's streaming with us this morning on the World Wide Web. This is another day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Our scripture reading this morning will come from Psalm 121. That's Psalm 121. And it reads as following. I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from which cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. I have read to you Psalm 121. May the Lord add a blessing to the readers, hearers, and doers of his holy word. Oh, hallelujah. Bless your name, Lord. We, we agree with the psalmist, oh God, when he wrote, I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills. God, we're going to do that from cometh our help, because all of our help comes from you. God, we bless your name. We honor your name. We magnify you. We glorify you. We thank you, God, because there is none like you. God, you're so faithful to us, oh God. Lord, we've come through 2020, and you've kept us, oh God. Your mercy and your grace has sustained us, and we look forward to going into 2021. This year, oh God, we pray for new mercies every day, oh God, for we know that you give new mercies, oh God, and we need new mercies for 2021, dear God. Father, some of our same concerns coming out of the old year, coming into the new one is still here. The virus and social injustice and all of those things, oh God, but we know, oh God, that you can keep us. We know that you will. Oh God, we bless your holy name, oh God, for allowing us a chance to see a brand new year with brand new promises and your brand new mercies. God, you're a good God, and we bless your holy name. Some have fallen by the wayside, oh God. Some have been sick, oh God. But we still declare and decree that, God, there is nobody like you. You are a good God, and we thank you right now for all that you've done. We thank you for what this year is going to hold, oh God. Father, we come now thanking you for leading us as we selected a new pastor. We pray that you would bless him and his wife and his family as they come, oh God. We pray that you would give him every resource that he needs to be successful, dear God. We pray for our church, oh God. Thank you for the commitment. Thank you for the, the just the way things have been handled, oh God. Our church has been moving on, been strong, oh God. And we thank you and we know it's because of your word. that you kept us. We know it's because you love us. We know it's because, God, you got our best interests at heart, for your word says that you have good thoughts toward us, not of evil, but of good, and to bring us to a desired end. And God, we're going to hold out and see what the end going to be. God, continue to bless us, oh God. Bless our church. We have some sick among us, oh God. We have folks who are in financial distress, oh God. But yet, like the psalmist, we will look to the hills from whence cometh our help. And we know that our help comes from you. God, we are grateful. We're excited about what you're going to do in 2021. And we thank you right now. Continue to bless our church, oh God. We thank you for the faithfulness of those who've been Helping things keep going on, dear God. We pray for a vision of faith ministry, oh God. Lord, they've been here giving up their time, their treasure, and their talents. Bless them, God. God, bless our music ministry. 
Help them to keep on praising, oh God, because you're worthy to be praised, dear God. Thank you for our prayer ministry, dear God. You said men ought to always pray, and God, we've been doing that. Thank you for our prayer ministry. Thank you for our mission, oh God. We thank you for each and every ministry of our church, oh God, and pray, oh God, that as we go into this new year, you give us new vision. You give us new strength, oh God. You give us a commitment, oh God, to keep on keeping on. Now bless every church door that stands open in your name. Let 2021 be a year where all men will say, God is God, and there is none like him. God, we bless you. We praise you. We adore you. We magnify your name. Thank you, Lord. It's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. like to say good morning to the church. Uh, my name is Deacon Johnny Foster, leader of Division 8, and I'm here with expressions from the deacon's desk. There will be no Bible study for the entire month of January. Let me say that again. There will be no Bible study through the whole month of January. I would also like to thank all of you that stuck with the deacons through the process of getting a new pastor. And we want you to continue to keep the new pastor lifted in prayer as we go through this transition. During the month of January, we will be reading Galatians for the first week. There are six chapters. Second week, we will be reading the book of Ephesians, six chapters. Third week, we will be reading the book of Philippians, four chapters. And the following week, which is the fourth week, we will be reading Colossians, four chapters, first and second Th Thessalonians. There are eight chapters in those two books. So that will be our reading for the month of January. A couple of the other things that I like to bring to your attention. Normally, on the second Sunday and the second Saturday, we would have leadership breakfast and installation of offices. We will not have that on the second Sunday and the second Saturday in the month of January. That will be put off until a later date. We will get back with you and let you know the time and date that this will take place. Next thing I want to bring out is that we want to keep our sick and bereaved in prayer. We want to remember Sister Helen Rogers for the loss of her husband. We want to continue to pray for Sister Verna McIntyre who lost her father. We want to pray for Sister Phillips and her family who lost an aunt. And there are others, Sister Colbert and her family the loss of her husband. And there are others we need to keep in prayer. The prayer list is long, so let us remember to keep all those in prayer. And we want you to continue to pray for the Holman Street Church and the deacon ministry. We still have a long ways to go before we get back to where we want to be. So let's keep the church in prayer. Thank you. We are in this together now. There can't be a they any longer. It is we that has endured every major challenge in history. Now we have the tools to overcome this challenge. Social distance, wash your hands, get tested and wear a mask. It's time for all of us to become we. And look out for each other. I have no doubts. Because 
I believe in we. Better together.
we thank you for being faithful. God, you are faithful, God. You've been faithful, you. You've been faithful. Come on, you ought to thank him for being faithful. Come on, you ought to. You've been kind, Lord. Kind. Sometimes we're not kind. Sometimes we're mean. But he's always kind. You've been kind. And your mercy toward us. Come on. We offer. We offer. Come on. We offer praise. Come on and offer. Come on. You're right there. You're sitting there. But if you got this and you made it to this day of 2020, going into 2021. Because you don't know if you're going to make it into 2021. 
So while I yet am breathing, I will bless thee, O Lord. I will praise thee, O Lord. So I'm going to give us one time. I'm going to give us one time. The Bible says let everything. So that means even if you're at home, you have a reason. This is your responsibility. Let everything come on. We're going to get one time. That half breath. Lord in 21. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. new beginning thank you for we know it was so much stress so much tragedy so much loss of loved ones sickness all over the land not just here at home on the street but everywhere but I do know God you're sovereign and you're in control you are perfect in love and you are intimately with wisdom so God, we come to say thank you this morning everywhere. For the Bible says, cease with our praying and to give you thanks in everything because it is your will, God, for us to say thank you. Thank you for kindness. Thank you for grace. And then, Lord, there's so much you have done for so many of us. I ask forgiveness for those that don't recognize the goodness of the Lord. I ask forgiveness for those who have not felt and saw in the spirit of what the Lord is doing in their lives. For you have kept our families from hurt, harm, and danger. And even, Lord, with us going, saying the absence of the body is to be present with the Lord. For you keep telling me you have the found say about everything, everywhere. So we thank you, Lord, this morning. Thank you. Thank you, Lord, for the pastoral vacancy ministry working so tireless and hard and trusting in you, Lord, to give us a new pastor, to give us a new leader, a leader that's going to carry us further. We say thank you this morning. We say thank you for answering our prayers, oh God. Thank you for blessing us, oh God. For we know there's much more to be done. But we know you're on our side and you're right with us. 
I pray for every church that the doors are open in the name of Jesus Christ. Let they be blessed with favor. But we know the gift comes from you, God. Now, Lord, I want to just say thank you for every, every family. Every family, boys and girls, aunts and aunties and uncles everywhere, Lord. We want to say thank you this morning. Thank you this morning. Thanksgiving is in our hearts for this new year. But we know, God, you're going to push us further. You're going to make us a winner. You're going to take us even higher heights than we ever could imagine. Then, Lord, I want to pray for the man of God that's going to bring the word today. Oh, God, I pray, oh, God, that he will tell it and say it just like you give it to him. Oh, God, I pray that as he comes this morning, that he will say everything that you have given him to say. Bless his family. Bless his wife. And we say thank you, Lord, for blessing our wives. We thank you for the deacons of this church for bringing us, keeping us. We're leaning on you, oh God, and depending on you for everything. We say thank you. We pray thank you for the new beginnings. We pray for Zelda and her family and the great family and all of the family. God, we pray that they will see a new beginning, a new season. And we thank you, Lord God. I just can't say thank you enough. But we say thank you for blessing us. Thank you for the music ministry. Thank you for the VOF ministry. Thank you for all the ministers of this church and other ministries that are open in the name of Jesus Christ. We pray and we ask this all this morning in the mighty and the precious and the holy name of Jesus Christ. We ask this prayer for all. Amen, amen, and amen. I have the greatest pleasure and honor as I stand here to introduce one of my favorite I call him my favorite country friend. Because he always tell me that he's a country preacher, he's a country man, but he has such a big heart. And he's one of my brothers, because I think he's, I'm a Texan by native Texan born, and he's a Louisiana. So we got a mix, a great mix there. And so as he, is making his way this way. I know he can tell more about himself than I could, because I might get it wrong. So as he come, may God bless and forever keep him, is my prayer. Good morning, Homer Street. Thank you, Reverend Ennis Burton, my little friend in Jesus. Uh, I want to set the record straight for those who are wondering why I'm just getting up here. Well, some of us deal with certain stuff different ways. And when I got the news that my pastor had died, I didn't want to. I didn't want to hear that. Matter of fact, I didn't even want to accept that. And when my wife asked me, uh, "Did you hear Pastor Johnson has died?" I said, "No." And she caught me by surprise when she asked me the question. But after I sit there a while in my my recliner, I said, "Well, let me call." somebody who can give me some, some, some real news. So I called my brother in Christ, uh, and he told me, yeah, he called me Charlie, just like his dad did. He said, yeah, Charlie, he, he's gone. 
And after I got that news, it was like all kind of weight fell upon me. And for a long time, even right now, even, I'm still going through some stuff that because of the absence of a dear friend. Yeah, like my, my brother preacher was saying, you know, we country boys have a connection. And once we get connected, when we become disconnected, we become discombobulated. And we can't seem to function as well as we used to when we had that other partner beside us. But God told me, okay, doctor, you, uh, you ain't the only person who was a friend to him. I know his wife loved him very much. Mac, Bracy, and Michelle, the grandkids, they all loved him very much. But I had a different love for Pastor Johnson. And the love we shared, it was, it was kind of unusual. He was from Mississippi. I'm from Louisiana, and we, we, we just talked to each other like, like men ought to talk to each other. We respected each other. Uh, he said stuff that I didn't like, and sometimes I said things that he didn't like. But nevertheless, we never had an argument. And when I was called by uh, Deacon Teller, he was the only one who knew what I was going through because I had told him he had called me before and I told him, not now. I'm going through some stuff I got to process first. And when he called me and asked me did I want to do the sermon on the first Sunday, I'm like, okay, God, now, now I'm ready. You have equipped me with the things that I need to do what you want me to do. So I immediately started pondering on the book of Joshua came to mind. And I'm saying, Lord, why, why Joshua? You know, I, I ask a lot of questions because I want to know. They say if you want to know something, ask somebody. If you don't know, ask somebody who you think do know. So I constantly ask, Lord, why, why, why Joshua? He said, read it. Okay. So I started reading. And... When I started reading, God started dealing with me in a mighty way. And up until this point right now, uh, uh, I'm still dealing with some things and processing some things between me and my pastor and God. So I pray that you would bear with me and let me hear tell you what thus says the Lord. Eternal God, our Father, we come right now in the humblest manner that we know how, Lord. Some of us come with bound down hearts, bowed down heads, heavy hearts. And Lord, some of us come with burdens that we can't bear. And Lord, you said, cast all our cares upon you because you care for us. Now, Lord, I pray that you would just allow me to be able to do what you appointed and anointed me to do and go to my seat. Now, Lord, I pray that you would be with me all the way because you said in your word, first of all, that you would never leave me nor forsake me. And that's the word in which I stand on right now. And, Lord, I pray for Sister Johnson and family. I pray for all those who have lost loved ones. And I pray for Deacon Miller, who is heavy on my mind, that you will continue to strengthen and keep him. Lord, I pray for Sister Jordan and all those who have lost loved ones, Sister Bush, I mean, Sister uh, uh, Colbert, or Heavenly Father. And Lord, I just pray that you would continue to build them up where they are torn down and strengthen them, O oh dear God, where they are weak. Enable them, O oh Lord God, to be able to do that which is right in thy sight. And Lord, when praying days are no more, pray for a happy medicine to your kingdom. We can praise your name forevermore. It's in Jesus' name I pray and ask it all. Amen, amen, and amen. The, the grass may wither, the flowers may fade, but the word of our God is going to stand forever. 
If you will, for a moment, turn with me to the book of Joshua. Chapter 1. And we're going to read verses 1 through 3. But there will be other verses that I will interject into the sermon as I go along. But our main verses are verses 1 through 3. And the topic of this sermon, if I may put one, is how to get a fresh start from the old year. And a subtopic would be the changing of the guards. And it reads on this wise, Now after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore arise, go over this Jordan, thou and all this people unto the land which I give to thee, them, then even to the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you, as I said unto Moses. You may be seated in the house of the Lord. Thank you, streamers, for joining us this morning. Uh, dare not to say that you will be blessed with what God have told me to tell his people. Yeah, I stand here thinking of the bodily absence of my pastor, but I know his spiritual presence is near. God has told me time and time again, Charles, do what you need to do, and I'll take care of the rest. Now, in Joshua, verses 1 through 3, it says, I told it that the topic was how to get a fresh start from the old year. And the first point I want to bring out is that, first of all, we have to face the fact that our leader Moses is dead. We have to face that fact. And see, when God was dealing with me, when I was reading these verses, every time Moses' name popped up, Johnson's name popped up in my mind. And I paraphrased a statement that it says, you got, we got to face the fact that our leader, Johnson, is dead. But we don't have to stop there. Because God said that whenever one lay down, he raised another one up. And I know without a shadow of a doubt that one has already been given the baton to continue the race that our pastor Johnson was running. And once you face the fact that your leader is dead, now the first step you need to do is admit it to yourself. I have to admit it to myself time and time again that Pastor Johnson is gone. But the more I admitted, I admitted it to myself, the more comfortable with the idea I became. I'm not good at mourning death. Never have been. But when I kept continuously admitting it to myself that our pastor was gone, God started to deal with me in a mighty way. And after I admitted it to myself that he was gone, then I had to announce it. Keep telling yourself, hey man, it's, it's, it's over. It's a, new, it's a new chapter from the start. It's a, new, it's a new day. And once I announced it, I had to accept it. And, and right there was the breaking point for me because accepting the fact that he was gone took a whole lot out of me. It took so much out of me that I just didn't want to come and stand when Brother Taylor called me because I didn't feel like I was ready yet. I had some more things I had to take care of concerning my pastor's death as far as the process goes 
before I could stand up here and preach the word of God. And once I accepted it, then the adjustment period started. Now that I've adjusted, I've been adjusting to the fact that he's gone, and I've accepted the fact that he's gone, and I've announced to myself over and over that he's gone, things have gotten a whole lot better with the peace of mind that I have before it all happened. I don't know how any of you guys feel when you lose a good friend, but see, I got some good friends that I, some I've lost already, and the latest one was my pastor, and, and it, does, it does something not just to the mind, it does something to the soul. It, 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 it's, it's, it's sad when, 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 when we as people lose something that we really care for, we don't want to let go. But God always got something to put in place what he has removed from you. We just got to believe that. And the second point is we need to bury our leader. And when I say bury our leader, I mean, you know, we, we need to cut the grieving process as short as possible. Well, well, you can do what you want to do. I did what I had to do. I couldn't just cut it short because of the first part that I was dealing with. And even right now, when I, when I start to talk about him, my eyes start to tear up because for some reason, I still think he's going to walk through that door. And I still think he's going to come and sit on that bench and he's going to sit to me and say, Charlie, you got my Bible? Those are the things that the pastor of this church and I shared when, we were, when he was living. And now that he's gone, uh, it's gonna be, that's, a, that's a void that uh, uh, it can be replaced. But I don't know who I want to let take the place of Pastor Johnson. But God said, don't worry about that. I've already prepared a person to receive the baton to continue the race that Pastor Johnson started over 40 years ago. All we got to do is be obedient to the word of God because everybody knows that the Bible says obedience is better than sacrifice. And, and I, 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 after I, I got to the point where I could just grip all this in my mind and, and do what God wanted me to do. Then he said, uh, I had to put a plan in place. And I'm like, me? Planning? That's something I never cared for doing. If you don't, if you think I'm joking, ask my wife. She'll tell you up front, I do not like planning. Because whenever I plan something and it don't go like I planned it, I got a problem with that. And sometimes it's hard for me to get over that, but the fact of the matter is, sometimes I did that plan and the God wasn't included. And the Bible states that only that which is done for Christ is gonna last. So when you make a plan and you put, to get, to put God in the plan, you plan to fail. So here it is, I'm standing here before you right now thinking, hey, he planned. He planned, he planned. Everything our Lord and Savior did, he planned, he planned, he planned. Everything my pastor did, he planned, he planned, he planned. And today I can stand here and say, oh man, I wish I had to plan some stuff because now I'm suffering the consequences of not planning. And if you are young and you're listening to me right now, don't be like me. Because I remember one day I was in a Sunday school class at YDM, and we was talking, and, and a young girl, I, I ain't mistaken, I heard, I think Brother Deacon Week was in that class, and he was telling us about a, a man who waited till he was 80-some years old before he accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, as his Lord and Savior. And one of the kids said, I'm going to wait too. And I looked at her, I said, who told you you're going to live that long? You need to plan. Put in place a plan 
that will carry you in the right direction. It's easy to go down the wrong street because the last time I checked, temptation is on every hand and sinning, hear me out, I'm not condoning it, sinning feels good. The devil's not going to give you anything that you're not going to like. He's going to put the thing before you that's going to get your attention to where he can get your soul. And that's all he's after. Because the Bible says he come to rob, to kill, and to destroy. So therefore, when we plan, and we plan, and make a plan, put a place a plan so that we will go in the right direction, then we know that God is in the picture. Don't forget, don't fail the plan. But the saying goes, when you fail the plan, you plan to fail. You know, I, I, I've been conditioned <laughs> to do sermons that weren't long because I used to always preach at the star hope. And I was always quenched for time. And I would always be looking at Deacon Davis going, how much, how much, how much? And he would say, tripping on that. And I would try to stay within the time frame because I didn't want to go over because I didn't want to make Holman Street look bad. But God has given me the opportunity now to do what he wants me to do. And as long as it takes to do it, as long as I'm doing it according to his will, so I, I, I said uh, <laughs> about the plan, <laughs> it helps you focus on a new task. That's what planning does. And every day we wake up, something new is going to happen. Something new to us, I should say, because the Bible says it has nothing new under the sun, but it's new to us. And we look at the situation like, man, why I'm having to deal with this today? But I've learned over the time that I've been walking with Christ that in order to grow, you've got to go through some things. Uh, no test, no testimony. And every time you run, move from one level to another, new level, new devil. You're going to have to deal with some issues on the next level that you didn't de deal with on the level down here because you have grown to the point to where you overcome those issues. Now God has moved you to a level to where he wants you to get better than you were before. And I noticed that when I was reading this, this, this passage of Scripture as I read the whole chapter of, uh, of Joshua 1, God, uh, uh, God kept telling him, be of a good courage. And he said that four times in this chapter. He said it three times in Deuteronomy, the chapter before this one, 31. And I'm saying, why God keep telling Joshua, be of a good courage? But then I thought about Moses and what all Moses went through. And when you're going to deal with God's people, you got to have some courage. Because God's people will make you say and do something you didn't intend to say or do. So you got to be of a good courage. And the Bible says Joshua was full of the Holy Spirit. That's why he was prepped to succeed Moses when Moses was cut off from seeing the promised land because of disobedience. Remember I said a minute ago that obedience is better than sacrifice. Well, because of Moses' disobedience, God didn't allow him to see the promised land. He let him peek over there. But just imagine, you work and you put up with these people and you went through all these trials and tribulations with these people year after year, and now I'm at the door to go to the promised land and all of a sudden God said, just look over there. You can't go, just look. Ah. I'm glad I wasn't Moses because Moses had to deal with some stuff that a normal human never would have dealt with. I, I, I said to myself when I was reading this chapter, I said, Moses, there must have been black people. 
they took Moses through changes after changes after changes, and every time God would bail them out, they would thank God for a few minutes and go back to doing the same thing they did before. They didn't make no kind of preparation for a fresh start when they got in the promised land because they never stopped doing what they were doing in the, when they was, went through the wilderness. We as Christians, we go through wildernesses every day. It's on us how we're going to come out of that wilderness. We got to be able to put in place a plan that will allow us to be able to say to ourselves, while we are going through the wildernesses of life, Lord, I know you said in your word, uh, uh, weeping may endure for a night, but joy is going to come in the morning. And I used to hear my, my, my mother used to always sing this song, trouble don't last always. I'm like, man, I thank God that trouble don't last always. Because when Moses went through what he went through, we probably would have said that lasted always for Moses. No, it didn't. It just looked like that to us because we were looking at it through a human eye. God was looking at it through spiritual eyes. And Moses did a job that was appointed to him and him only. God got a job appointed to somebody already. And he's given them the baton already to continue the race that Pastor Johnson started over 40 years ago. I don't know who it is. And the person who got it don't even know who they are. But when it's going to be introduced to them that they have been chosen to do what God has called Pastor Johnson to do, then the reality of the matter is going to hit them. But I like the fact that when God assigns us to a task, he's going to give us all the tools that we need to complete that task. And when, when Joshua was, was, was making all this ado to get ready to make this fresh start, from the old year, I, I hear people saying all the time, I'll be glad when 2020 is over. Uh, we ought to be careful what we say. Because 2020 can be over because you died. It won't be over because 2021 came in. We got a couple more days left in 2020. God created the heavens and the earth in six days. If he did all that in six days, it gets a man what could happen too. Stop rushing yourself to the graveyard. I just be glad to wake up in the morning. I don't care what year it is. Lord have mercy. Because of the simple fact that God told me in his word that I can do everything in my mind that I think is right. If it's not done toward the will of God, I've done it all in vain. I got to keep my mind stayed on him. And I got to stay on the course that God has set before me. And the fourth and last point I want to make is that he said, do not be afraid of the new territory. You have to be strong and know that God is on your side. So when God introduced a new thing to you, don't, don't be, don't be wishy-washy and, and thinking that, oh man, I got to deal with this here, man. Oh, man, how am I going to get through this here? And I look at some folks and I say, how soon they forget? Now, God woke you up yesterday and you up here hollering about, man, I, I'll be glad when I see tomorrow. Man, I'm there. Well, just trust and know that God has your back. If God did it yesterday, the Bible says God is the same today, yesterday, and forevermore. It don't make no difference what we think as people because God said in his word, you are, a day is like a thousand years. A thousand years is as a day unto God. So you rushing 2021 in and don't know you might rush it, be rushing yourself out. So be careful what you say when you, you wish something would hurry up I, I made one of the most stupidest statements I ever made in my life when I was young. I'll be glad when I get grown. I said, now, nah, they didn't tell me I was going to have to be paying bills and all that when I got grown. I mean, 
I thought I could just get grown and, and, and do what I want to do. Ain't nobody going to be able to tell me what to do no more. You know, even when you're grown, people tell you what to do. And for the most part, you might want to listen. But God, God, regardless of how old we get, we are still children in the sight of God. We are still his children. And he also said that you have to, you got to believe, you got to believe God by faith for him to work the way you would like for him to work. Now, you got to do that. Now, if you asking for something and, and, and you just acting haphazardly and you saying to yourself, man, I know I, I'm asking it, but I don't know God. I don't know if God going to do this or not. I mean, I'm just asking it, but I don't, I'm not sure. But you say to yourself, hey, man, whatever I ask God for, I'm thinking to myself, I already got it. I remember when I was a kid, I had a dream, and I always wanted to fly for some strange reason. And I had a dream one night. I had, I had got a helicopter. I, that dream seemed so real to me. When I woke up that morning, I went to the window looking out in our backyard. We had a pretty big backyard. And I was looking in the backyard for that helicopter. And when I didn't see that helicopter back there, I was let down. And then all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit came to me and said, son, that was a dream. I'm like, man, dreams are that real? Well, God is even more realer than a dream. Because he said in his word, acts, anything that you will in my name. And I tell people all the time, I can give you a simple, some simple instruction to get anything you want in life. And it's found in Matthew 6, 33. The Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all the things that you want and desire will be added unto you. But don't you get up there and try to put the cart before the horse and try to make a deal with God and tell him, you know, God, I, I really need a car right now. If you give me that car, I'll come to church every Sunday. You get that car, first three Sundays, you to church before everybody. Fourth Sunday, you're late. Fifth Sunday, you're even later. By the time you get around, by the 10th, 11th Sunday, you stop showing up. And questions start arising like, where is so-and-so and so? Well, he got a car. Oh. And see, I can say that because I know somebody personally <laughs> that did that. And when they did, I, I had to go to him and say, man, you told God if you got a car, you're going to come to church every Sunday. But you know how humans are. Well, man, I had to go over here and I had to do that. Well, you had to do all that before you got that car. Why you ain't walk over there and do it? But the planning part, when you plan and you keep God first and foremost in your plan, you ain't got to worry about failing. When I came up here and I left home and I told my wife I got to go over here and do a, a recording because I'm supposed to be doing a sermon for the first Sunday in January, uh, I started reading the Word of God because my pastor always told me, whenever you, you, you're going to do a sermon, do a lot of praying. And I've been, I've been praying. You know, it was, it was so strange to me. I was riding, didn't even turn the radio on in my truck. And I'm riding saying to myself, man, this, this is God. This is God. Because it seemed to me like I always got to have some noise around. But that solitude that I had riding those two or three days in my truck with no radio, I had some good conversations with God. And I tell people all the time, some of the best conversations I have in the world is when I'm walking behind that lawnmower, cutting grass, talking to Jesus. Because see, I know without a shadow of a doubt, when they were singing that song, He's Been Good to Me, I can't jump up like I used to, but I sure wanted to. Because God has been so good to me. You know, I know without the shadow of a doubt, if God had not called me from the lifestyle in which I was leading, living, I would be dead right now. I had to make preparation for a fresh start from that old stuff I used to do. And when I made that preparation, God said, okay, you put the first step forward, and I'm going to continuously push you from behind, and I'm going to guide you in the path that I want you to go in. 
You know, I thank God every day that he allowed his son, Jesus, to come down from the throne and walk amongst men. And he didn't just come down here to walk amongst men. He came down here to teach us how to live. And not only how to live, he taught us how to die. He died a death that he didn't, wasn't even uh, sin, uh, guilty of. It's bad when you, I tell people all the time, I know it's got a lot of people in prison locked up for something they didn't do. I can only imagine how they feel. Can you imagine how my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ felt going to the cross for a bunch of sinners, some who wasn't going to change their mind about what they were doing, they were going to keep on doing what they're doing, but nevertheless, he tended to walk toward the cross. And when he got to the cross, he died. He died for you. He died for me. He died for those who have not yet even accepted him. But the good thing about that is, he don't give up on any of us. Now we, we, we hey man, that, that dude ain't gonna make it, man. He, he just ain't gonna do right. But now, if everyone in this room <laughs> under the sound of my voice right now, you know what kind of lifestyle you had before you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Just imagine if God had felt that way about you and said, oh, he ain't going to, oh, Gistan ain't going to change. Oh, Foster ain't going to do right. Oh, Davis ain't going to do right. I'm going to let them do what they want to do. No. God said, no. I, I called you. You need to come on here because I ain't going to stop calling you until you come. And when he went to the cross, he died. They said they hung him high and they stretched him wide. For you and me, he died. But I like the way the story goes. They said, that's not where the story ends. They said, three days later, he rose again. And when he rose up, but see, the thing about that is when they were doing what they were doing to him, they didn't know they were playing right into his hand. Because he said in his word, if I be lifted up, I'm going to draw all men unto me. All they were doing was putting them up higher for all men to see. And when they put him up higher, God said, okay. Jesus got on the cross, and when he got up there and he hung him up, and he said, he told God, okay, it is finished. And when he said that, things, strange things started to happen. And for somebody to think that they really took his life, they, 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 they sadly mistaken. He said, you don't take my life. I lay it down. And if I lay it down, I can pick it up again. And the day he's sitting on the right hand of the Father, interceding for us who still falling short sometimes in our walk, but God said, okay, that's all right. You keep on praying and asking me to forgive you. And he said in the word, if you ask me to forgive you, I'll be faithful and just to do just that. Yeah. But if you don't ask, then don't worry about being forgiven. And when he got up, he got up with all power. Yeah. All power. In heaven and in earth. In his hand devil was completely defeated and that's what I love about my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ the doors of the church is open if that be one under the sound of my voice who have not yet accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. We're nearing the end of an old year, about to enter into a new year. If you want to make it, and you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and something happens and you don't, hell is your destination. But if you still got blood running warm in your veins, and you want to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, please do it right now. 
Just tell Jesus, Lord, I confess with my mouth and I believe in my heart that Jesus Christ died and he rose on the third day. And the Bible says you will be saved. That's not that hard to do. The hard thing to do is not do it. Because when you start suffering the consequences of not doing it, don't blame God for your consequences. Because one day, he's going to return. And when he come again, he said, he's going to come back. He said, and the dead in Christ going to rise first. And those who are yet alive is going to be caught up. Don't you want to be in that number? I know I do. Feel like going on. Hallelujah. I feel like Would you, would you come? You still got a chance. The blood is running warm in your veins. You still have a chance. Come They're going to come. On every hand. But you got to be strong and of a good courage. Very important. Anyone, anyone, anyone. Any of you streamers who are listening right now, if you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, now is the time. With the coronavirus out there and all this other stuff going on, and you're not protected by the assurance of Christ, you're living a wasted life. Accept Him now and be saved. And start anew in 2021. And God allow you to see it. Amen. Amen. All right, it's, it's offering time. Now, for me, I left home and I just just check my pockets. I don't have no driver's license. I don't have no money. I know Deacon will give me some money by next week. <laughs> but it's offering time. The Bible says, Give, and it shall be given unto you. Press down, shaken together. And I tell people all the time the reason why a lot of folks don't have is because they don't know how to give. They look at me crazy when I say that, but uh, that's a fact. The Bible says if you give, God will give back to you. And he said when you give to the poor, you lend it to the Lord. And there are many ways in which you can give. You can give online. Uh, you can bring it by. We got a drop box at the original sanctuary. And uh, drop it off at the drop box. And uh, uh, you can mail it in. You got three options you can do. So there's no reason for you not to give. Just remember God gave all he had, his only begotten son. So why is it that we can't take some of the money that he's given to us and give back to him? You will be blessed in doing so. I thank God for allowing me to come over here. You know, I, I, haven't, I haven't sweated in a long time. <laughs> I was telling people the other day, man, I don't, I don't sweat at work hardly. <laughs> I'm up here sweating like, like I'm finna get ready to go to the lecture chair. But uh, God, God is good. I don't mind sweating when I'm working for God. Uh, I want to thank Deacon Taylor, first of all, for making that call. And uh, no, I want to thank God, first of all, for unctioning Deacon Taylor to make that call. And Deacon Taylor following his instructions. And me as a as a, as a, as a preacher, I, I'm thankful for God, to God for continuously working on me 
because I'm a work in progress. And yet most, most people look at pastors and preachers like they have already arrived. You know, you'd be surprised if you sit down and talk to some pastors and preachers and, and find out some real things that's going on in their life. I ain't got no secrets because I know God knows and sees everything. So if I, I'm going through something and I know Johnny Foster can help me, Johnny Foster can hear about it. If I'm going through something and Deacon Phillips can help me, Deacon Phillips can hear about it. And, and my brother from Louisiana, he know he ain't got nothing. He, he know he gonna hear about it. Uh, weeks, I mean, uh, I know you're a tiger, but you're you a TSU tiger. I'm a G-man. <laughs> But, you know, God has been good, though. I look at those people who have gone through that, that COVID thing and, and come out just as good as they were when they went in, or better than they were when they went in in some cases. That's God. Nobody but God. And for those of us who have not even caught it, I know that's God. You know, we, we, we wake up every morning sometimes, even Christians, we wake up every morning thinking that, we woke up because the alarm clock went off. I had an old man tell me one time, I tell you what, you take you about a hundred of them alarm clocks and set them in a, in a graveyard and set them all to go off at the same time and see how many of those people wake up. But now, if Jesus walked in that graveyard and say, wake up, everything in there gonna wake up. Because you notice when he asked, when he, he called Lazarus back from the grave, he called Lazarus by name because they had some more dead people around Lazarus. He came there for Lazarus. He didn't come there for those other people. And when you say Lazarus come forth, Lazarus came out of that grave. That's how powerful the word of God is. That's why I always want to be in the word and get the word in me. Let us bow. Eternal God, our Father, we thank you right now for what has transpired on the night. I pray, oh God, that you would continue to go with us and stand by us. Now may your peace of your Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide with us henceforth, now, and forevermore. Let us depart from this place, but not before your presence. And may you walk with us and talk with us as long as we may live. In the name of Jesus, I pray and ask it all. Amen, amen, and amen.